helps everyone feel safe. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, we are live. Live, live, all the way live. Stand by. Give me a cup of coffee going here. Time for some beef jerky. Let's see who all jumps on. Let's see. Let's see who all joins in on this good Friday. There he is. Just the man I was hoping would join. Happy Good Friday, buddy. Afternoon, what are we loading? Uh, 25 alt six. I actually just got back from the range. I did a five shot test group of these guys, the McGuire ballistics. You probably can't read that, but this is what I sent you a picture of earlier, uh, Zach. These are the 25 cal focus. 25 cal version, it's 95 grain, so just got to the range, good deal. Yeah, I just got back, and so I ended up, <clears throat> ended up testing, uh, let's see, six, yeah, six, I shot six five-shot groups with the 90 grain GMX and H4831, so went to test that see how that see how that performed hello from talladega uh-oh think uh i think jeff there's gonna be having a good time coming up soon when is the race in talladega but yeah so really good day at the range um, in terms of overall like precision and accuracy all that stuff eh. You know, I didn't really shoot amazing groups. Now, almost everything I shot in the 25-06 performed better than the factory ammunition. And I did shoot another five-shot group of that same box of factory ammunition that I shot the, the two, the two five-shot groups in the very beginning uh, whenever I was kind of checking out the, uh, that Ruger M77. And I did an intro video if you guys haven't seen that, did an intro video to the project, and I showed the two five-shot groups from the factory ammunition that were garbage, and so I wanted to shoot another five-shot group today with that same factory ammunition, the same lot number, and sure enough, it was garbage again, probably a, maybe a three, probably a three-inch group, maybe larger than that at 100 yards, and the velocity, the, the SD was like 55 on the five shot group uh, something there's got to be something off with that particular lot of hornady super performance for the 25 out six because that that's just absolutely terrible so yeah so the factory ammo shot terribly hand load shot way better had a couple of groups about an inch couple five shot groups about an inch and uh, with that 90 grain GMX I'm going north of 32 with H4831 which according to Hornady's load data I shouldn't be doing so Zach just like you were talking about 
the uh, something being something being weird with the low data with the CX, you ran into pressure issues. I did the same thing with the GMX, right? Using H forty eight thirty one because their max velocity with a fifty seven point eight grain charge is thirty one hundred feet per second. I was I'm over thirty two down at 56, 56 grains. So a full one point, like 1.8 grains below their max. And I'm at like 32.50. So, so I'm way over Hornady's published velocity numbers. Yep, I'm in the same boat. So it applies to the GMX as well. At least in my case it does. So. You live seven miles from the track, and you never went to one. Law, NASCAR lost me when they changed the point system. I, I was never really, like, I'm not a huge NASCAR fan. My dad watched it a lot when I was growing up. We watched, I mean, it, the race was on every Sunday <clears throat> growing up. So that's why I asked. Oh, what's going on, Michael? It was 34.49 with, jeez. Man, that is cooking. That is cooking. But yeah, I'm, I'm somewhere in that 3250 range with 56 grains of H4831. So I'm about 150, about 150 feet per second over Hornady's max velocity number and I'm 1.8 grains below their max charge. So something's a little weird about that data. Some of the powder burn rates change a little bit over the years from lot to lot. Yep, there's definitely variation in lot to lot on the powder. So that could definitely have something to do with it. But I had pretty good results as far as <clears throat> accuracy, velocity, the SDs and stuff on the on the 25 out 6, they weren't great. You know, I was in the teens, which is fine. You know, mid to upper teens, which is okay. That's going to be acceptable for, for the application. But, yeah, that 90 grain, it definitely, that particular, that, that M77, it likes it way more than that 117 uh, factory ammo. So, always wonder why Hornady groups copper with similar grain lip. Yeah, that, that is kind of, I don't know, that is kind of weird. In this in this particular instance, it's broken out by itself in the 25 alt six because they don't have any data for any other. I don't think they offer another 90 grain bullet in 25 cal. So they go from they do a 75 grain V max, 87 grain uh, spire point, which is discontinued, and then a 90 grain G, GMX, then a 100 grain interlock. And this is on the 11th edition uh, paper manual. But yeah, everything else, I, I'm with you. They do. They group their their copper stuff, their solid copper stuff, with everything else, which is which is odd. Shooting the 90 CX and the 110 ELDX. I'd be interested to see how that 110 does. I'm just I'm not a big fan of the ELDX bullets. I'm just I've seen too many people post on YouTube, post online, you know, about their lackluster performance with that with that ELDX. It'll be interesting. I'm sure it'll shoot great. But the GMX is shooting pretty pretty good. And then the the Maguire ballistics, like I said, this guy. I shot one five shot group with it because they came in last night. They got delivered last night. Um, UPS dropped them off. And so I got up this morning and was trying to rush around and, and get some brass prepped. Uh, prepped a few pieces of of the uh, of the alt six brass and then just I, I didn't really have a ton of time before I went to the range so I was like I'll just dump a 53 and a half grain charge so I I went and shot the 53.5 grain charge at H4831 and shot you know the five shot group of these Maguires and they shot really well the the group was right at an inch so very promising and the velocity they're they're the 95 so five grains heavier than the, the GMX I'm shooting, but I think the average velocity, I was somewhere, I think, tear over 3,000, so I could definitely push that 
you know, much higher. Um, didn't have any pressure signs, no, no issues there, no concerns. I loaded, I loaded that bullet at 3.2 zero zero. That's what I went with. It's, um, in this Ruger M77, I'm jamming at 3.285. So I got 85 thousandths of jump. So I could actually load them a little bit longer, play around with overall length if I wanted to. But I just want to see how they shoot in comparison to the 90 GMX. I would like to go a little bit heavier than that 90, um, but we may roll with the 90. I think it's going to be a really good shooter. Hope everybody's having a good, a good, good Friday. So. Excited to test yours when they get there. Yeah. Yep. Looking forward to see, seeing how they do for you. I was pretty excited when they, when they showed up. I wasn't even tracking them or anything. So I, it was just kind of a surprise. I went to walk the dog last night, opened the door and there was a package. So pretty excited. And then today was kind of a long range day for me, longer than normal. Uh, my normal range days last anywhere, maybe an hour, hour and a half, two hours. You know, I, I don't, it's mostly when I can fit it in my schedule. So I don't always get to sit out and just hang out at the range for hours on end like I would like to. Um, but today I was out there for, for a couple of hours. And I took the 25-06 and I took my 30-TC. So that was nice, shooting that thing. That's a really sweet rifle. Gonna use N555. That'll be that'll be good to hear how how they perform with that powder. But yeah, really good, really good day overall at the range. I was shooting that 30 TC, testing out uh, some more shooters world match rifle powder in that cartridge, and finished up shooting some Nosler 180 grain Acubons the 175 grain Barnes LRX, and then shot a little bit of the 168, the McGuire Ballistics, 168 grain uh, hollow point. Really good stuff though. On one of my five shot groups, so I loaded up on the McGuire Ballistics, I was testing different overall lengths. So it was, I think it was like 46.9 grains maybe. I'd have to go back and double check that with powder and then I was just loading different overall lengths and pretty good SD so far using that powder, that bullet powder combination. I think the SD on my first five shot group with it was like 2.2. So, yep, I'll definitely have a, I'll have more of an in-depth video, you know, on the 25 out six going over the target and all that fun stuff and kind of a path forward just like normal. So, so you're out at the range. What all did you take with you? Oh yeah, local grocery store had this stuff. Buy one, get one. And this stuff ain't cheap, as you guys well know, I'm sure. Beef jerky ain't cheap. Oh, I got distracted talking. I forgot I'm even loading or dumping powder. So hopefully everybody's having a, a good day. Anyone got any big plans for the weekend? We'll be doing, we'll be going to see family. Of course, we'll be at church on Sunday. And then, uh, be doing that and then going Seeing a lot of family tomorrow and Sunday. So that'd be a good time. Savage 25 out 6, Remington 30 out 6, 30 belt to Newton, 300 wisdom. Nice. All right, there goes Fast and Furious down the road. Man, people fly down the road in front of my house. The area I live, I guess in, surrounding area, has really exploded in North Alabama over the past 
I don't know, maybe five, six years or so. Longer than that. I've been here since 2008. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in this surrounding area since about 2008. And, man, it's just it's taken off. Subdivisions and apartment complexes popping up every which way. Run some of the 6.5 Creedmoor Brass through the 30TC and see what it looks like yet. No, I have not done that. But uh, I thought about you making that comment. I thought about that today because when I went and shot the, uh, when I was shooting the 30TC, I had a piece of brass when I went to, uh, when I went to, to unload the gun, uh, Brass came out, and I was inspecting it like normal, and had a split neck. So, it's not looking too good for this batch of Hornady brass that I'm using. I'm really hoping maybe that's just kind of like a one-off, and that it won't won't start to uh, I won't start to see that anytime soon, because then I will be converting. Creep more brass to uh, 30 TC. 30 TC brass is not the easiest thing to find. Crossfit. No, mm -mm. negative. Cross fat. That's my that's my workout regimen. All right, now we're gonna switch over 54.5. You have people moving from California and New York. Who knows? Probably the the area that that I live in in North Alabama. I mean, it, it's it's a pretty uh, pretty big. I don't know what you want to call it. Maybe government work. A um, lot of stuff dealing with with NASA. A lot of stuff going on over here um, in this part of the in this part of the state. So folks moving from all over, moving in, living here, which I believe this, uh, I think on the last election, I want to say the county that I'm in was actually, I think it actually voted blue, which is hard to believe in the, in Alabama. Um, but I'm pretty sure it, I think. So that tells you all you need to know right there, right? A lot of folks moving in with, you know, a lot of different ideas, we'll say, thought processes. All right, up to 54.5 grains now. And I'm just repeating the test uh, that I just completed with that 90 grain GMX. I'm just loading up the exact same charge weights but I'm going to be testing the 95 grain uh, McGuire ballistics. So five grain heavier bullet. We'll see how it does with the exact same charge weights. See how it shoots. That initial group <clears throat> shot pretty good. How are we doing this evening? I think everybody's doing pretty good. Maybe. Scottish American in the house. Or at least I hope everyone's doing well. getting the same stuff here in Texas. Yeah, yep, then you know the feeling. It's um, it's just kind of crazy. Crazy to see, uh, I, I don't know, yeah. It's just interesting. Like I said, I've been in this area, this particular area for 15, going on 16 years now. I've lived kind of in and around the, the surrounding area that I'm in now and it's, the, it's just crazy how things have changed, how things have exploded in terms of population. Thank you. Oh, stand by. Got to grab my coffee. I made coffee at the beginning of the live stream. 
probably sounded like I was going to the bathroom. My coffee maker running in the background. But got to have the afternoon coffee. You guys got to go order you some of these McGuire Ballistics. These things shoot really well. What I'd like to do with this 25 alt 6 project too is I'd like to, to turn turn over because uh, it's, it's obviously it's for a buddy of mine like I've already said in the in the kickoff video but I'd like to turn over 25 rounds of the 90 grain GMX and then hand him 25 of the McGuire ballistics and then say hey here you go go have at it go kill some deer I, I just would like to get photos of the deer themselves yeah they are spendy uh, of the kill right and or any type of recovered bullet, if at all possible. With them, with them being solid copper, probably not gonna happen. But um, that's just kind of, that, that would be nice to see. You know, it's it's more about how, how did this stuff perform in the field? You know, because how they perform on paper, you know, does, I mean, yeah, you want them to, to shoot really well, right? You, you wanna try to take the most accurate load into the woods that you can, but at the end of the day, I'm more interested in how are these things going to punch through a deer, you know? So that's really, uh, I think that's my plan is to give him 25 of each and then say, here you go, go, go see how they do in the field. But do I hunt a lot? Well, see, that's a relative question. A lot to somebody that never goes could be a handful of times. A lot to somebody that goes all the time, no, I do not hunt a lot compared to that. I would like to hunt more, but you know, it is what it is. There's a really good, um, a really good podcast interview that Eric Cortina did just recently with, I think his name is Jay, is it Jay Christofferson? I believe is his name. Do I have any experience with Lehigh defense bullets? But no, I don't. And I almost feel like you're, I almost feel like Jeff is spying on me here because I was actually Googling and looking up Lehigh defense bullets just yesterday. So it's a little weird. Um, but I'm looking those up for a 300 blackout project that I wanna do, so. At the price point, not sure they offer something Barnes Hornady. Yeah, at all don't. Yeah, I mean, at, at, hey, fair point. You know, that's definitely. Uh, oh, y'all were supposed to remind me to change my charge weight. I'm on the next row of five. Yeah, I mean, they, they just recently um, went through and lowered their prices. They're still expensive. They're still, you know, I think over a dollar a bullet, like right at a dollar a bullet, maybe just a hair over. Uh, they are not cheap by any means. They, they are not. So these are not bullets that you're gonna go, uh, these guys. These are not bullets that you're just gonna go buy, you know, several hundred of and go shoot, you know, two, 300 of them at the range. That's, you're burning through some cash doing that. Um, and so for me, for me, I, I, I was really excited to, to try them and had a really good, you know, it's one data point, really good, uh, showing with this particular bullet, um, with this brand, at least killed that nine point this season. So that was, that was a big deal. And I really liked the performance on it performance of it in that 30 TC. So I'm a big fan. I mean, we'll see how they do. I, I'd like to kill a few more animals, you know, a few more deer, see how they, they do overall, but I think they're going to perform well. So the, the, the podcast would, I think it's Jay Christofferson, not Chris Christofferson, big difference. Um, it's, that podcast with him won't stabilize in my seven mag. What are you talking about, CW? 
I gotta go. I'll have to double check that when I'm when I'm out of here. CW just my buddy CW just sent me a text. Um, but no, that podcast with Jay, he so they're both competitive shooters. Obviously, you guys need to go watch that stuff with Eric Cortina. He puts out so much great information on his Believe the Target podcast channel on YouTube, and I'm almost positive it was Jay. He was talking to him and. They go through, you know, hey, how'd you get started, all this stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. What do you use? You know, what cartridges do you use? All this just normal kind of stuff. And and toward the end of the podcast is where my ears definitely perked up because what was very interesting was he was he was talking about for the longest time he he would get so frustrated when he would try to go and compete and he didn't shoot well and he would get upset and he, he was putting all this emphasis and pressure and focus on competing and shooting. And he said it basically got to a point where he almost didn't want to do it anymore. And he was like, I'm, you know, I, I he was dreading doing this. And then he, he basically took a step back and was like, Man, my priorities are so out of whack, and he and he even said it on the on the on the podcast on the interview. He was like, my priorities were competing and shooting, and then it was like work, and then family, and then his faith, his faith in God. And he said that it, you know, he basically was like, holy smokes, this is this is completely opposite of what it needs to be. And he said, so he, he pretty much did a 180 on his list of priorities and he put God first, then his family, then work, then shooting and competing, right? So in that order, and he said, once he put shooting in its proper place, once he put competing in the proper place in terms of prioritization, he said, you know, at that point, everything changed for him. And so it was, I probably have the name wrong on who he was interviewing. It might not have been Jay, but it was one of the guys here recently that he interviewed. You guys need to go watch him if you're not watching him already. But that was a really good, uh, really good interview. And that, I mean, that's definitely you know, something that we all have to do is take a step back and go, what are the priorities, right? What are my priorities? What takes up my time? What takes up my focus, you know? And you have to adjust from time to time. You definitely do because you can get caught up just like this stuff, just like reloading, right? It's such a fun hobby, something I really enjoy doing, something I love to do. But at the end of the day, if that takes away from my focus on my personal relationship with God, my family, right? My job, you know, if it, if it detracts from those areas of my life, then, then I need to take a step back and say, Hey, no, you know, that's, that's not how this is going to work. So really interesting. Fair enough. I used to go hunting with, Used to go with my father hunting. Yep. That's a good way to get started. Very well said. Well, I mean, but but at the end of the day, I'm I'm like the world's worst. Right? At that very thing, because it does from time to time I do. I find myself going, man, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, a project I want to work on or a different bullet I want to test or a different powder I want to test or I wonder about this or I wonder about that or, you know, I heard something on a video and then you, it starts you down a rabbit hole of like, oh man, what about this piece of equipment? What about that? And you go and you start to research and next thing you know, it's like, man, I spent way too much time and effort on this. So it's just something where you, you have to, I feel like you, you have to constantly recalibrate your life, or at least I do, and the way my brain works, and the way I think about things. 
because if, especially if you're if you're a man, if you're a husband, if you're a dad, if you're any of those things, the desire to provide, right, for whoever it is that you're responsible for, okay, that that's an all-consuming feeling where you go, I want to be able to provide for my family, for my kids. Now, I'm talking under normal circumstances. We're, we're generalizing things here because I know there are some extreme cases where some people become fathers and they couldn't care less about their children or they get married and they couldn't care less about their wife, right? Um, we're not talking about those extremes, but in general, that's uh, that's something that, as a man, that's something that we have within us is that feeling of, hey, I'm a provider, a protector, right? So let me go out and provide. And then that can become all-consuming, right, where you're working all the time. It's all about, man, I, I got to provide, I got to provide, I got to provide. And then next thing you know, you look up and your kids have graduated high school, gone off to college, you go, what? And then it's you and your wife in the house and you're like, well, who are you? You know, you, you, you don't even you end up growing apart. And you, you were so focused on, man, I, it's my job to provide, right? And so you, you do, you gotta take a step back and recalibrate. Listening while driving was on range, headed on. Hey, what was that text you sent me, CW? What was that in reference to? I haven't even looked at it. I saw it pop up, but I'm, since I'm live, I didn't go look at it. Eagle Eye TV, can I get a shout out? I don't know. Can you? We got the snared life in the house. That's uh, that's probably one of my favorite YouTube channels to go watch the videos that he posts, the snared life, so y'all go check him out. Oh, wait, I was supposed to change the powder charge again. See, y'all got me distracted. That experience with terminal ascent bullets. Oh, man. They wouldn't... Um, I just saw part of the message so they wouldn't stabilize in your seven rim mag? Is that, I think that's what the message said. And if you're, you just said you were driving, listening while driving, so don't, don't be typing responses to my questions. We can talk about it later. We, we can, we, we can text each other later about it. <laughs> I'd rather you be safe. Uh, let's see, that was 53 and a half, 54, 54 and a half, 55. Now, okay, I'm at 55. Point five. Yep, exactly what Michael said. Hope uh, hope you're doing well, CW. I'm digging all the I'm digging all the scope videos. By the way, I've I've got I've got a scope here that I, I almost want to send to you, just so you can do a, an unboxing and a review on it. It's but it's a, it's a one inch tube, and I know that's that's not your thing. You're switching, wanting to focus on thirty mil tubes. But I do look forward to seeing your videos. Um, seems like you post one about every day. So, oh, tried voice. To, oh wait, reloading. Uh, reloading some seventy TNT for the six R. Oh, cool. I actually picked up, so speaking of six arc, apparently somebody at my at the range I go to, they really don't care about, I guess, I, well, I know they don't reload and they don't care about keeping their brass because I picked up, it's probably 60 or 70 pieces of six arc brass, which CW, by the way, they're gonna be coming to you. Um, it's Hornady head stamp. Somebody, I found the factory ammo boxes in the trash and yeah, it's, Anywhere from, I think it's 60, 60 or so pieces of the six arc brass. So I'm going to get them cleaned up. I'll, I'll decap them, uh, wet tumble them, get them cleaned up, and I'll send them to you, CW. You tried voice to text? Yeah. My brother does that also. And those text messages are pretty funny. I'm not a big voice to text guy. But like I said earlier, hope everybody has had a, a really good, good Friday. Don't forget to tune in uh, tonight. 
on the Georgia shooting connection. Starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time, so 7 p.m. Central. You guys make sure you tune into that, that live stream that they do. If, especially if you're into reloading, voice to text can get you in trouble. You better believe it. If you're into reloading or shooting in general, the amount of knowledge that's on that live stream, the Georgia shooting connection, it, it's, it is a, just a treasure trove of information. So, and knowledge. So you guys go check it out. So I think I've got three more charges to, to dump. Yeah, thing never understands me. Exactly. That's, uh, I'm sure it struggles. Like if I would try to do voice to voice to text or whatever, it'd be struggling pretty bad. It's always funny when, uh, when I do a video and I mention a certain rifle that I'm going to be shooting or that I own or whatever. It, it, it always cracks me up. The people in the comments that, that put in quotes, raffle, R A F F L E. That always gives me a good laugh. I'm like, I say it how I say it. And I ain't going to change it. So it's rifle. And that's what you get when you're from Alabama. So I got yeah, two more. Used to pick up range of brass I could find. When I got a chronograph figured out, some of them with the same power charge could be close to 100 feet per second difference. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I pick up I pick up certain head stamp, um, brass and cartridges when I'm out at the range. I don't pick up everything, but because I don't load pistol, so I just don't bother picking up any of that or. 223 Remington or anything along those lines. But if it's something I load for and it's a head stamp that I would like to have, I'll pick it up. Like today, that Hornady 6 Arc, I picked it up because I'm going to send it to CW. So I was just kind of walking up and down the line. I was the only one there, like most of the time when I go shoot. And I was checking the brass buckets where you dump all your brass. You're supposed to sweep it all up and dump it in a, a bucket when you leave. And, of course, a lot of people don't. But this particular individual, they did. They picked up all the brass and put it in a bucket. And I couldn't believe it. I thought it was 6.5 Grendel at first, and I saw 6 Arc, and I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So... best self-defense weapon without going overkill. I guess it depends on what you're trying to defend yourself from. What you referenced there, the Barrett, that might be the, your best option depending on what you're trying to defend. Right? Six arc brass was very hard to get for a while. Using Starline. Yeah, I love Starline Brass. That's really good stuff. Ha! I hear you. If you say my name, I will subscribe. If that's all it takes to get you to subscribe, brother, you'll unsubscribe real quick. Just like, just like my pastor says at church all the time. Somebody can talk you into something. Somebody else come along and talk you out of it. Rogue Tide. Just how we roll. Oh, that's a good one. Trying to defend against a small group of chickens. 150 of them. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, then in that case, you know, maybe, maybe your best self-defense would be a, 
maybe a couple foxes. Train you up a couple foxes. That'd be neat. That makes me think of this guy I see on Instagram sometimes. He'll, uh, he'll do some reels where he does falconry and he'll walk around the city killing pigeons with his falcon. He'll just walk up to a building and a couple pigeons will be sitting up there and he just lets go and boom, falcon just takes him down, kills the pigeons. And he videos it. It's very interesting. Uh, let's see here. Some people throw away all kinds of brass. Insane to me. I only throw away 22 cases, everything else gets saved, even if I don't have that ca caliber yet. Yeah, exactly. Like the other day, like I said, it, it depends on what it is, but um, for the most part, especially unique stuff, or unique to me anyway, uh, 357 mag is not unique, but that's definitely some brass I will not leave laying on the ground. I'll always pick that up, and I don't even own anything in that cartridge. And then also 45 long colt. Somebody had, it looked like they did a couple mag dumps of 45 long colt. That stuff was just laying around, and so I picked all that up. Don't own anything with that either. Chambered in that. <sighs> Trying to find some once fired 375 H&H. &H. Good luck. Oh, Benelli M1014. 375 H&H. &H. So, so what are you shooting with that? <sighs> By the way, Christopher, what are you shooting with the 375? <sighs> and where are you going to shoot whatever it is you're chasing? That was a good cup of afternoon coffee. All right, on the last one. Oh, just won a gun broker auction for some. Nice. I wonder how much that set you back. Hopefully not much. But I can't imagine that stuff's cheap. Oh wow, funny low recoil load for Whitetail in Iowa. Nice. Yeah, we were looking, I don't I don't know if Iowa was a place we looked at, me and my brother. I don't know if we looked there for out of state hunting or not. I can't remember, we might have. But man, a lot of the places around here is just so expensive, or at least uh, it's expensive to us, right? I mean, you're talking over 350 bucks some of them you're talking close to $500 for the license and tags just to go hunt in another state. It's like, man, that's almost, that, that's, that's way, way too much. Especially when you can go to Kentucky, I think Kentucky it's 335, I believe it was last year. I'm pretty sure it's, it's 335 for out of state, which I think is the same for Tennessee. I think Tennessee is like 320 or three three thirty. Some, somewhere in that range. Tennessee's the same, pretty much the same as Kentucky. Um, which, yeah, is very expensive when you compare it to an in-state license for Alabama where I pay, like, all game that you're allowed to hunt here. You know, all game and even wildlife management area license the whole night. It's like $71. So, and our hunting season goes from for whitetail deer, it goes from like October 1st. This year, I think it was the last day of September is when bow season opens up. And then most of the state, almost all the state goes all the way through February 10th. So it's almost like, why would you go anywhere else when you can hunt here and hunt that many days between bow season, gun season, muzzleloader, the whole nine? It's like, why would you even want to go somewhere else? But it is. it, it was definitely a lot of fun going to Kentucky, and so that's why we're looking at going somewhere else as well. And just new new area, right? Different state, different terrain, just the challenge of it. We're looking forward to it, so stupid expensive, yeah. Wisconsin is 225 for out of state, I believe. Really? Hmm. Okay. I usually rifle hunt Wisconsin, which is 200. 
Nice. Yeah, we were talking about trying to go somewhere like that's within reasonable driving distance. Reasonable, right? Again, it, it's relative uh, what's going to be reasonable to each person. But we started looking kind of around, looked at Arkansas. Arkansas was pretty expensive for out of state. Um, I think we looked at Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia. We didn't look at Florida. Uh, don't think. I don't think we looked at South Carolina, North Carolina. We did look at Virginia, or we might have. We, we might have looked at the Carolinas. I can't remember. But so yeah, we're looking at Virginia. That, that's kind of. I think that one's going to be high on our list to to possibly go check out once we decide to switch. You know, from Kentucky. So because I think Virginia was only like two twenty five or something. So. We won't check that out at some point in time. Stand by. We're back. Is it running? Okay, it's back running. <clears throat> I think. Upper Midwest. Uh, let's see. Upper Midwest, you just have to be aware of see that. Well, same thing down here. There's uh, in Northwest Alabama, there's a county, Lauderdale County, maybe, is the CWD zone in North in Northwest Alabama. So it's the same. It's very, very similar here. I mean, it's not prevalent throughout the rest of the state, but if you go hunting over in that direction, they have a CWD zone over there where basically you mow down anything you see. So they, they want you to kill every deer you see over there. So, uh, but yeah, you gotta be, you just have to be aware of CWD. Yep. That's what my buddy killed an eight point over at Freedom Hills. I think that's where he was at. I think he was over at Freedom Hills, which is in, near that area that I'm talking about in Northwest Alabama. And, um, and he killed he killed a nice eight point I think it was an eight actually with my my rifle and load my rifle and my 140 grain spear impact load for the 6.5 Creedmoor that's what he took with him and he had to get or he didn't have to I think you had, I think you do I think it is required if you're in that area if you kill a deer in the area I think it is required to get them tested for CWD and then of course obviously it's just a smart thing to do as well but he got it tested and came back negative, so he's good to go. Once I get off the live stream, I gotta go seat these bullets and get all that squared away. Very interested in seeing how these McGuire ballistics do. All right, looks like I dumped powder in, a, in all the cases, so that's always nice. You gotta double check that. 2088 for 50 pieces. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Wisconsin, we'll have to add that to the list of, but then of course that, that starts to creep into that, like I said, what's a reasonable distance you know, that you're willing to drive and that, that would kind of stretch our trip to where we're going to have to take, you know, time off work and all that stuff. So, cause right now the way we, the way we hunt Kentucky is we typically drive up Friday evening, drive up Friday evening, get to the hotel, get checked in. It's pretty late at night on Friday by the time we're able to get there and then hunt, you know, get up, hunt all day, Saturday, pretty much all day, Sunday. Yeah, all day Sunday and then come back. So Thanksgiving week is Wisconsin rifle season. Hmm. That's definitely good to know. I'm sure it is it's probably the Orange Army out there walking around too, if I had to guess. I think the hunter density in a place like Wisconsin, I think it's huge. I think you guys have so many people that hunt. To return a lost chicken. The chicken is now found. It's good.
good to not be lost. What is that? 600,000 tags on average? Am I reading that right? Or did you punch in one too many zeros? Opening day can be very noisy. That's how it was in Kentucky. Man alive. What'd you get, AR? Six hundred thousand tags sold every year. Exactly. Yep. You definitely want to want to join that flock. You're right about that. We're all lost till we find God. Hundred percent. Six hundred thousand tags. Some accurate twenty seven hundred and some Winchester two forty four. Oh, nice. I've tried accurate twenty seven hundred and six five Creedmoor before. I've never really done like extensive testing with it, but I have tried it out. It seems to give decent velocities. Not a bad option, especially if you're in a pinch and you, you don't really have anything else to use. It's, I mean, it was one of those where I saw it on the shelf, picked it up, and then I was like, well, what can I even use this for? And 6.5 Creed was one of them, so. It's a good option. That's a lot of tags, by the way. It's slowing down each year, really. Hmm. It's interesting. I wonder why that is. You know, people just getting out of hunting or, or what. Now, what are you gonna load with Winchester 244? That's that's not a powder I've ever used. Favorite pistol round, nine miller forty-five. Mm. I'm gonna say neither. 5.7 by 28. And some Hornady 75 grain. Oh, nice. Good deal. Just dropping in to say hi. Hello. Glad you could join. Or glad you could drop in. Ooh, favorite rifle. That is a much tougher question. Yeah, that's that's a much tougher question. Hmm, I, I don't know. I don't know on that one. I would say, oh, if I just had to pick one, if I had to pick one of, of all of the, the ones that I've either owned or, you know, whatever, shot and, yeah, I would say, ooh, I would almost have to say the Kimber 84M Hunter in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, the cartridge, uh, the cartridge is irrelevant, but just the, my favorite rifle overall, I would have to say it's probably that. I'm thinking back now. It's probably that one. Probably that one. Yeah, yeah, I'd say probably that. That's one just because of how light, how light it is, and uh, that'd be a really, really handy. You know, if you just kind of had to pick one, and say, hey, I've only got one rifle to shoot and hunt with, and all that, uh, I would definitely go with something like that. That's a lighter weight setup. Do you reload five point seven by twenty eight? Do I reload it? No. Do I have the capability? Yes. Maybe. Um, I think I have a. I think I have a die set for that cartridge. 
I believe I do. But I do not, I do not reload that. And I, I've read, I was reading about reloading for that cartridge and apparently it's, it can be a little finicky when you go to reload it. So Norma 200 powder, reloading the 4570 will match and outperform factory loads. Nice. That's one brand of powder I have never tried as Norma and I would like to. But, you know, back pre-COVID when the stuff would sit on the shelves, I, I never bought any, right? And then now you just, or at least I haven't seen any sitting on a shelf in obviously since COVID kicked off. HK416. But yeah, Norm, Norma powders, that's that's another one of those. Just like Vitavori back, I, I used to not use Vitavori powders just because of the cost. And then now, because everything is so expensive, right? And you try to go buy like a pound of this stuff, right? And folks are charging outrageous amounts of money for Hodgdon powders. It's like you're better off spending a few more bucks. Sometimes it's the same price as Vitavori now. And it's like, you might as well buy that stuff. Norma comes from Sweden. That sounds about right. They probably fall in the same boat as like Alliant powders, right? It's almost it's almost impossible to get Alliant reloader powders. You'll see them pop up every now and then. I think they come from Finland. <clears throat> Alliant does. Maybe. Um, do you own any lever rifles? No, I do not. I have in the past, but I don't currently. I like a good lever gun, you know, in 30-30. Or 250, 3000 Savage. That's another, it's another sweet lever gun, the Savage Model 99. I like that one. Last weekend, Brownells had hazmat free shipping. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't even see that. Which is probably a good thing I didn't see it. I hope everyone's able to find primers. That's really the, you know, the big thing. Yeah, exactly, AR. I I'm with you there, brother. It seems like anytime they're running a sale, hazmat free or, you know, free shipping over a certain dollar amount, free hazmat, whatever it is, it's like, man, now is not the time. The wallet's hurting. Powder Valley currently has free hazmat. Nice. Is that on a certain dollar amount or just free altogether? And American Reloading, that is, that's a really good place to check out too. Oh, okay, 99 and above. That's easy to do with powder. You buy a couple pounds, you're at 100 bucks. So, it just paid bills. Exactly. Brown L's has primers. Still can't find large rifle. I got lucky recently. Um, last month, I believe it was. I was at Mr. Big Guns in Huntsville, which is my number one recommendation for a local, local gun store in my area. And I was talking to the owner, just hanging out, drinking a cup of coffee. And he had just gotten in a shipment of CCI number 200 large rifle primers. And so I think he got, oh, I think he got 50,000. I think he got 50 bricks in. And I was able to buy five of them. So really good deal too. I mean, 80, buck, 80 bucks a brick. Well, I say really good deal. That's ridiculous, right? Those used to be like $30, $30 for a thousand back pre-COVID. Just your standard CCI stuff. But he had them at $79.99 a brick. Okay, you found Powder Valley's where you found the Norma powder. 
yeah, that's that's one of those brands I really want to I want to try to buy some and, and check them out, especially if you're having good luck with it. I have found primers at Academy. Yep, at, at a local Academy. But yeah, you just gotta stay on it. I mean, you, if you're really hard up for large rifle primers, you almost just have to bite the bullet, no pun intended, and pay the hazmat. It's almost worth it. If it means you get, you get to uh, keep loading and shooting, you know, then you have to evaluate, is it worth it or not? So. But yeah, I got lucky on that on that large rifle primer find recently. Which then which then of course I did, you know, spread the love on that one and I think I sold a brick to a buddy of mine. I actually sold some to a guy locally just earlier today. So Yeah, exactly, AR. Reloading went from an expensive hobby to an extremely expensive hobby. I've got Johnny's reloading bench on the TV over here, off to the side. It's a little sad that, that he's not going to make content anymore. I mean, he's kind of like the main reason I even started doing videos in the first place. So... Yeah, if you, what happened to him? Nothing. He just, uh, he came out. He posted a couple of videos. Oh, what was it? At the beginning of last year, I think. Yeah. Or he, he posted a couple of videos recently. And um, I say recently, probably months and months ago. Where he, he said in the videos, he was like, look, it's just, I'm done. He's He's like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. He's like, I'm just getting out of the whole making video thing altogether. He shut down his Patreon account, like everything. He just got out completely. So, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm not exactly sure why. I think he 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 was mentioning in the videos. I think he just kind of reached a point where he was just tired of doing it, you know, and he wanted to do something that I think he mentioned he wanted. He wanted to have stuff around that like actually made him want to shoot, right? He, I think he felt like he reached a point where it was just turning into a job, and I don't, I don't think he liked that. So, so yeah, he just stopped. Yep, I miss his videos too. He didn't get me into reloading, but he, uh, my brother got me into reloading, but I found his videos pretty quick, and he's the reason I even make videos now. I just thought it was neat. I was like, oh, I can turn on a camera and just film what I do and post it. Like, maybe it'll help somebody else. You know, hey, here's what I'm testing. Here's what I'm working on. And, you know, maybe you can compare results or see how it went for me and whatever. So, yeah, lots of great information. I've got his, I've got his 6.5 Grendel playlist running right now. Scotsman, that website is up and down. Yeah, it, it's a, he's a wealth of knowledge in terms of, you know, information that he's putting out. And so you can go and watch and, you know, I mean, some of his stuff like back how he used to do his reloading methods and things like that, obviously things evolve over time. And he would have probably have a different opinion on how to do something now versus maybe videos that he posted five, six years ago. I know I, I do. So I'm sure some of his thoughts around reloading have changed, but the overall content that he put out and the amount of volume, especially around like 300 Blackout, go and watch his 300 Blackout series. Man, it's like, it. what is it, like 80 videos he put out for 300 Blackout or something like that? So if you're interested in all at all in 300 Blackout, you got it. That's a that's a must watch playlist. He's got some really good content around that. 
around 6.5 Grendel, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, all that stuff. He's got he's got some really good info out there. So uh, let's see. Man, I must have got some sun today when I was at the range. I didn't realize my son, my head got burnt. Um. That's, well, you know, sometimes you just make a good point there. Not ignoring you because it's black. It's because you're a DA. District attorney. Personally tried to talk to the owner. He was supposed to email me, never did. I'm not chasing someone. I either want my business or doesn't. Yeah, that's, I'm with you there, uh, Scotsman. Uh, I'm with you 100%. Scottish American, you know, it's, you, you either want my money or you don't, right? You either want to provide good customer service or you don't. It's really no more complicated than that. Yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I know these guys are expensive. I got it, but man, that's, customer service is where it's at with that bunch. So they do a great job. I think my next AR build is going to be a 450 Bushmaster. Man, that is an awesome round. I I unfortunately bought a rifle chambered in that cartridge, and it was not, I'll say for me, it was not a wise choice because it was the Ruger American Ranch. So it's that really short, compact, which is nice, but that compact Ruger American, um, the older style the Ruger Ranch, and and it was in 450 Bushmaster, and that thing punches you in the face when it's in a lightweight synthetic, you know, setup. And so I I shouldn't have bought that, but I do like that 450 Bushmaster. That's a great round, especially for the straight wall guys. States where you can only hunt straight wall. That's between that and the 350 Legend, and now I think they have got what the 360 Buck Hammer and all this other stuff they're coming out with the 400 Legend. Man, that's straight wall. Yeah, they're they're definitely advancing some stuff for sure. I'll pay more if service is good. Exactly. Exactly. Which is why I shop at Publix. So, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a grocery store. I guess maybe local, lo locally or in the region, southern region, maybe of the U.S. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they're a nationwide chain. But I avoid Walmart like the plague. So I'll go to Publix and pay a little bit more because every time I walk in there, somebody greets me and asks me how I'm doing that day. And then when I leave, they say, hey, I hope you have a great day. Do you need any help with that out to your vehicle? No, I don't, but thank you. I got it. I'll be back. You go to Walmart, it, good luck. Yeah, I just, I refuse to set foot in that place. Didn't he quit his job? Yes, he did. He he did. He quit his job and he, he was full-time YouTube. Um, he was full-time YouTube. I guess all things YouTube. He was, he was full-time. Yeah, it, it hadn't been too long ago that he quit. Um, I say it hadn't been too long ago. It's, it, Realistically, uh, it's probably been like five years. <laughs> you know, Michael, it's one of those things where we probably think it was literally a couple years ago, but looking back, it was probably like 2018, you know, when he, or 2019, when he was like, oh, I'm going full time, you know. So, which as golly, it's crazy how time flies. So Mr. Potter there, I work at Henry Rifle and the 360 sells the best. Really? That's interesting. Um, my dad has a Henry Long Ranger in 6.5 Creedmoor that I worked up a, a hunting load for. That's a really sweet gun, the Long Ranger. So really nice. If you're looking for a lever gun and more modern modern um, chamberings, that's that's a cool one to go with. I haven't messed with the 360. The straight wall stuff that I've kind of messed with, 350 Legend, which is probably one of my favorite cartridges. Uh, I'm not gonna say of all time, but it's it's definitely on the list and it's it's on up there. 
on the list. That thing is just so much fun to load for and shoot, you know, very, very little recoil. And it's delivering some good energy on target, killed a deer with it. You know, it, it's, it's a good performer, especially in a bolt gun. Have you ever seen her shot? No, I have not. Have not. Propel peach flavor is not that good. But we buy a variety pack, and so I'm not going to throw them away. If we get the variety pack, you know, a little bit better value. But then you get peach. Peach flavor. The only thing peach flavor that's really good is homemade ice cream. And you can't convince me otherwise. Not even peach cobbler. I don't even care about that. Peach flavored homemade ice cream. You had to buy a special crimp die for the 4570. Oh, really? That's another one of the things like, so you guys will see virtually all the videos I post or all the projects I work on, they center around bolt action rifles. And, and so for me personally, that's just one of the things about loading either a semi-auto or even a lever gun is I just don't want to have to crimp stuff. <laughs> and that sounds terrible, but man, like especially for an AR platform, you know, it's just not, that's not my thing. It's just too much of a restrictive platform, in my opinion. The brass is about six thou shorter than normal brass. Sixty thou. Now is that what brass are you talking about? Jerry Potter, Mr. Potter. Wait and see what you have to say about that. Zach, I hope you are, uh, I don't know if you're still with us or not, but I hope your range day is going pretty good. Oh, the okay, got you, got you. Okay, now I'm tracking. The Lever Evolution cases are shorter with the Hornady 4570 FTX bullets. Got it, okay. Now I'm tracking. Yep, Lever Evolution brass is short. Got it, okay. Now, now I know what you're saying, because it's the same thing for, um, I believe it's like 357 mag maybe. I think that's it, because they have an FTX bullet for that cartridge as well. And I believe it even calls it out in the in the load manual that you have to actually trim the brass shorter or something like that if you're loading that particular bullet. It does it does reference that, so I know what you're talking about now. 4570, that's another one where it seems like the popularity of that cartridge has really taken off. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, but I don't know. That's that's one I've never owned, never shot. Um, if I did get a lever gun, you know, it'd probably be something. It'd be something maybe chambered. Uh, the chamberings on a lever gun, if I could get one, maybe might be a forty-five seventy. Definitely a thirty thirty. I think that's such a classic. You, I don't know if you can own a lever gun and not have it chambered in thirty thirty. Yeah, that, that would probably. Yeah, and you have to cramp tube fed bullets. Yep, so there's just there's some extra there's some additional stuff thrown in there when you start to go down that path. And so for me, bolt guns and that's where that's where I live. That's what I enjoy most. I'll load for a AR platform or lever or whatever. I don't I don't mind doing it, but I live in that bolt gun world. I used to have a 6.5 Grendel. 
It was pretty, pretty accurate. It had an Odin Works barrel in it. Backstop. Hey, super, super genius. I bought the backstop pad for my 7mm 08 Pika. Love it. Nice. That's good to hear. Um, 570 is a fun gun. I have all, all weather Henry. Oh, I bet that is sweet. Um, but back to the backstop. Yeah, that is, it's definitely not a cheap recoil pad. 90 bucks is, that's pretty spendy for a recoil pad. I think a, a lot of people were commenting on the videos I've done so far on that, that you can go and get like a limb saver, you know, for like 30 bucks, right? And it essentially does the same thing, um, which is probably true. But that backstop, I was just, I was mostly interested in it for my Tika T3X in 270 Winchester, right? That's the only, that's the only rifle that I'm going to buy one for. And the only cartridge I was really interested in sort of taming the recoil a little bit because it doesn't have a threaded barrel, so I can't put a muzzle brake on it. Um, I could get the barrel threaded. Well, I probably couldn't because it's such a thin profile barrel, probably not, not enough material there to thread. Um, but yeah, that backstop, I thought it was interesting because I posted the video. So I, I did the unboxing video and kind of the overall quality and the, the fitment of the, of the recoil pad, which I thought could have been a little bit better. And, and backfire reached out. They actually commented on the video you know, I said if I had any issues or concerns or, or problems with it, they'd send it back and they'd fix whatever the, the problem was, which it wasn't to that level. But so I went ahead and just kept it on there and finally got to the range, I think Wednesday, and shot my first rounds with that recoil pad installed. And of course I did a video on it and posted it, which is it actually turned out to be one of my better performing videos, uh, one of my better performing recent videos. And somebody, I just thought it was funny that a guy commented and said something to the effect that, you know, one shot doesn't matter. Go and shoot a match with it, you know, a couple, two, three hundred rounds, and then come back and tell me how it does. And so I just responded to his comment, and I said, I don't shoot matches, I hunt. So for me, like, one shot is a big deal, you know, and, and I... I did shoot once in that video. I shot once and then I gave the initial overview of like, man, that the felt recoil was much less than what it was with the factory Tika recoil pad installed. And then I shot a few more times and just confirmed that yes, this is this feels just like a 6.5 Creedmoor. And it's a 61 grain powder charge, right? In a 270 Winchester. And so to make that feel like a 6.5 Creedmoor, in my opinion, that's a massive difference. And I was super pumped that the recoil pad worked the way it did. So I was very pleased with the function of the recoil pad. I know some people are kind of put off by a $90 recoil pad that is 3D printed, but it worked really well. So uh, having an issue loading the 140 FTX 357 mag bullet, seating die is deforming the bullet. All right, and then Jerry said you'll need to find a different seating die that has a different seating stem. Yeah, Hornady should have that option. Yeah, they probably have a. Uh, they probably have a different. I bet I would imagine they have a seating stem specific for the FTX style bullets, just like they do for like the A Maxes and the ELDX bullets and the ELD match bullets and all that stuff. You know, for other diameters like six five and all that and six mil they have specific seating stems i wonder if they have a you would think they would wow my seven millimeter 08 feels like a six dasher with a break and a backstop nice yeah i mean it it made like i said in the video like i took one shot and i, I that's kind of the point is to, because if I didn't notice enough of a difference after just one shot, like that's all it should take. Hey, I'm at the range. I know exactly how this gun feels with the factory recoil pad on it because I've shot it hundreds of times. Um, I have shot that 270 Winchester a lot and I actually had a Tika T3X super light in 270 
Winchester. I ended up getting rid of it, but I put hundreds of rounds through that gun as well. So I know how 270 feels with the factory recoil pad on there. And so if I noticed that much of a difference after one shot, then I think that just kind of proves the point. It's a really good recoil pad, right? You don't really need to go shoot a match to come back and say, oh, well, was that good or not? If you don't notice after one round, eh, probably wasn't much of a change. You got two seating stems that came with the die set. You were told the concave seating stem is supposed to work. It is almost like it takes too much pressure to seat. Huh. It's interesting. You had your untreated Tika. Yeah, I read that and I was like, that's, that's probably what you meant was unthreaded. I wish Backstop would make one for the Remington 700. They don't? I'm a little surprised by that. If they don't, because I knew I knew they had a list of, of different um, models, or different makes and models, right? Whenever I went and ordered mine, and that was back, you know, a few months ago, when I ordered it, they uh, they had different options in the drop down menu. I'm surprised they don't have a Remington 700 option. You would think that'd be one of the first things they would offer up would be a, a 700 option. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which, like I said in my video, that's you know that that recoil pad. It's not for everybody, and it's not meant to be for everybody. Like you, you don't need to go out and buy one for every gun that you have. You know, in in my opinion, it it's going to be a really, really good option for somebody that has a rifle that they take hunting and maybe, you know, it's like, like I said in the video, maybe once you start about that 270 Winchester range and go up from there in cartridge, like a 30 out six, you know, anything like that from like 270 and on up, once you start getting up into that powder charge range, you know, that's, that's where felt recoil it, it can really start to take a toll on you. If you're trying to reload or you're trying to work up a hunting load and you go to the range, you spend a lot of time at the range. I mean, that, that can wear you down after a while. So, so anybody that has those type, those type of rifles, you know, it, it's, I think it's a great fit. Oh, we probably going to hang out for another few minutes and then we'll shut her down. We've already been going for well over an hour. Man, time flies hanging out talking to you guys. Jiu-jitsu, shoulder injury demanded I get a good break and pad. I bet. Well, that's like me. I have severe bursitis in my right shoulder and that really pretty much shut shut me down for a lot of stuff for a while. Now, I'm, I got kind of teamed up with the right, uh, I guess kind of like ortho slash physical therapist uh, here locally. And man, it's he's made a world of difference. So I'm actually able to work out again. Range of motion is back, pain free. It's, yeah, it's been great, so. But it, I mean, it did. It reached a point where I was struggling to go to the range and shoot because shooting on a bench and the way I the way I positioned myself and I had my arm out to the side, I couldn't even do that. I couldn't raise my arm just that little amount. I couldn't do it. It felt like somebody was stabbing me in the shoulder. So, so Jerry said he didn't know if they made one for the he meant FTX but he figured they would. Yeah, I kind of figured they would too, especially if it's a, if, if the bullet is so unique or different that you have to actually trim the brass shorter, you know, or something along those lines, you would think that that would, that would be a, uh, that would call for a different seating stem. It's interesting. That's a blessing. You better believe it. Cause yeah, once you, once you lose function, of like a shoulder or something like that. Once you once you lose that mobility, I mean, it affects everything you do. Absolutely everything you do. Couldn't even put a shirt on. I mean, it was it was terrible. <clears throat> couldn't get my couldn't get my arm up 
and above my head. It was miserable. So, for a long time, actually. And now I'm, I'm pretty close to being 100%. Really pleased. Now it's just, how do I maintain that, right, moving forward? That way I don't get myself back in that situation, so. Shoulder injuries are no joke. Yep, just like a, a back or a knee. Anything. It, it is amazing, though, when, you know, because you're just rocking along with life and then something like that does happen. You know, I injured it working out, and it just slowly got worse over time, but then it reaches a point where it's like, oh, man, I really can't do anything anymore. I, like, I literally, I can't throw a ball. I can't even, like I said, put a shirt on. You know, I can't get my arm above my head, can't get my arm out away from my body. So... And you're like, man, I literally need to do that for just about anything I do all day. You know, it, it really kind of, I don't know, it just highlights just how much you use your arm and don't even think about it. Because then you go from doing that type of stuff to where it's like, okay, I can't do anything. I, got, I need to keep it locked by my side so I'm not in pain. You know, that really highlights just how much you do use your your arm and all that stuff each and every day same thing with like your back go get you a lower back injury and then yeah you're like holy smokes that affects everything i do yes it does roll tide from tuscaloosa i'd hope you'd say roll tide especially if you're there all right ar hey it was good to uh good to talk to you for a little bit man you have a good one yeah i'm about to head out myself we got four minutes i'm gonna shut it down at five o'clock uh central time I just gotta get, I gotta get off here. I gotta go seek these bullets and that's, I gotta head out to the, to the, uh, the building out back. That's where I do it. That's, I, I drop all the powder in my house. I keep my powder and primers in my house so it's climate controlled. And so this is where I do all the powder dispensing and then I take everything outside to, uh, to the building out back where I have all my, my reloading bench and all that fun stuff. So go do the bullet seating. But yeah, this, this has been fun. This has been a good one. I don't know if Zach's still with us. He, he might've had to drop. He was uh, reloading Quest. He was on here earlier. He's out at the range now. So he, he probably had to drop though. Looked like he had a big range day planned. So looking forward to the content that he's gonna put out. Later everyone, have a great weekend. I'll be safe. Yeah, I hope everyone has, a, has an amazing weekend. Uh, today's Good Friday. So, you know, Jesus died on the cross. Today was stuck in a tomb, and on Sunday he's going to rise again. That's that's the amazing story, right, that took place. That's why we celebrate Good Friday and then going into Easter and all that stuff. So, you know, praise God that that tomb's empty and that he didn't lay there. He didn't stay there. That's, that's for sure. Good to see you. And don't forget, everyone, um, Go check out Georgia Shooting Connection tonight on their live stream. It's date night for me and my wife, so probably won't be able to, to join in. Um, best thing that ever happened. You better believe it. You better believe it. Like Because without that happening, without, without Jesus going to the cross, dying for our sins so we, can, so we can actually have a relationship with God, because without that, we're completely separate, separated from him. Right, we can't we can't have a relationship with God without Jesus going to the cross and the fact that He rose on the third day, right, ascended into heaven at the right hand of the Father. Like, that, praise the Lord that that unfolded and actually, you know, prophecy was fulfilled and, and everything occurred the way it did. Because if it didn't, there would be no hope, right? It, it, we would we would have no hope. So. Tonight we're talking favorite old cartridges. Oh, that's cool. So, so like I said, Georgia Shooting Connection, just like the Scottish American said, um, the old Scotsman, um, they're talking favorite old cartridges. So that'd be a really cool live stream to tune in on and uh, and check out. Like I said earlier, the the amount of knowledge that all those guys have, especially related to reloading and casting your own bullets. If that's something you've ever been interested in, those guys. Man, it's like an encyclopedia of information when you, when you go and join that live stream. So I highly encourage you. It's 8 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Central time, and then of course whatever your time zone is based off that. Um, but yeah, I just hope everyone has a great weekend and uh, 
we'll catch y'all next time. I'm going to call it quits from here. I appreciate everybody joining and staying as long as you did, even if you dropped in just for a second or two to say, hey, I really appreciate it. So hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll catch y'all next time. I got to go see some bullets. So adios.